<laughs> well, good evening, everyone. We're going to get started here. I'm calling to order the Common Council of the City of Gladstone, December 8, 2015. Uh, it is now 6.31 p.m. Uh, Jolene, can you do the roll call, please? Councilor Schickman? Here. Councilor Mercero? Here. Councilor Johnson? Here. Councilor Turner? Here. Councilor McMahon? Here. Councilor Reisner? Here. Mayor Jacob Ellis? Here. Can you all please join me in uh, saluting the flag? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, folks, if you haven't been here before and you want to speak in front of the council, there's two opportunities to do it, but you have to fill out a little 5 by 7 yellow card up there by the podium and bring it up and hand it to Miss Jolene, please. Um, any agenda additions or corrections? Ross, I think you had something for us. Yes, sir, I have a couple of them. First, before we get to that, may I introduce Jim Wynott as our new Public Works Director. Jim, could you stand up and... Uh, like to just uh, let them say hello and uh, nothing more than that. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> welcome. Come on up. I think we've met before, but welcome aboard. Thank you. Appreciate you putting me here. Jim. You. Welcome, Jim. Thank you. Thank you. And Jim, there's a couple of overflows going on. No, I'm not <laughs> just. <laughs> Thank you. Um, <laughs> I have uh, one other correct or addition. Uh, number 13.5 would be uh, a motion carried forward from our executive session uh, about uh, sanitary sewer system. Uh, and with that, uh, Councillor Kim. Um, I would like to add a business from the council uh, right after agenda additions or corrections. All right. Anything else? No, sir. Thank you. Nothing here. Okay, Kim, since you called, go ahead and start us off. Business from the council. Uh, this is mainly for our audience members. Um, our interim city administrator, Ross Schultz, has turned in his resignation. It is a formality. Uh, don't panic. <laughs> we are in the process of getting a new city administrator. Uh, but for process reasons, he needed to turn one in, and he also has said he's willing to do whatever it takes, stay on a little longer or what have you, to make the transition seamless. Um, but this may be his last council meeting, and I wanted to take, don't smile so much. <laughs> <laughs> You're supposed to show a little disappointment or something. There you go. But I wanted to take this opportunity for the council to have an opportunity to properly thank him for his service. Thank you. Um, when we was looking for an interim city administrator, we looked at quite a few of them, and we thought, you know, we just need somebody to come in and keep our city going until we can file, find a full-time person. Uh, I think Ross really stepped up to the plate and took on this just like he was going to be here forever. Uh, he's got a lot done, and I just want to show my appreciation for him, and I'm sure the other counselors do as well. Thank you very much. For sure, yeah. Well, I'd like to pre uh, let you know that I appreciate how you came in on short notice, stepped right in, and uh, helped us out these last six months. So it's been, it's been a lot you. of fun. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Um, we are very lucky to have had Ross and uh, um, have his uh, help and guidance and lifetime of experience. We have worked him hard, and I think he's worked himself even harder. Um, it's, it's been a sea change since July 1st. Uh, we are darn lucky to have, uh, to have had you, and you've accomplished a great deal, and you're welcome back anytime. Don't be a stranger. Thank you very much, Mr. Ch Mr. Schultz. Thank you. I can't echo those thoughts anymore. You, uh, when you stepped in, I think we were envisioning, like I told you the other day or last week, that just somebody to kind of make sure everybody showed up and the lights came on, and you definitely have stepped up and helped us tremendously to get the new building, library, city hall, police station, all that moving forward at least. It's not done, but <laughs> we definitely 
are, we've got another step moving forward and a lot of it's due to your uh, hard work coming in for just an interim position, so it's much appreciated. Thank you. Anything? <laughs> you, don't. you don't have to. You don't have to. <laughs> I just want to say we're really going to miss you. You've done an amazing job and with our losses, you're not going to be here. Thank you very much, Council. As I mentioned the other night, I don't want you to get a big head. <laughs> But oh, yeah. I hope the new city administrator does as well as you have with your vision, and I appreciate it. Thank you very much, Councilor. And I'll just, you know, echo what everybody else said. <laughs> you know, I've had a blast. It's, yeah. uh, it's kind of fun to, uh, to meet someone in, in midstream and just connect. And, and I, I got to tell you, folks, if you, if you haven't gotten it from us, you really need to understand what an amazing, an amazing job this guy has done. It, it, he saved our ass, plain and simple. Uh, and I make no bones about it. Uh, we were wandering around in the dark, lots of changes. He helped settle us down and uh, gave us some great insight, great ideas. And, and, and I, I just can't say enough. I wish he wouldn't leave, but I understand. So with that, Ross. Thank you very much. Thank you, my man. Come around, play some golf someday. <laughs> you bet. <laughs> Got to get my Thank money you. back. Thank you. All right. Um, any other business from the council right now? We're going to do one at the end. All right. Uh, business from the audience at this time. Uh, we have the first person is Isaac Thoman. Thoman. Thoman, sorry. My apologies. Sorry. Hello, my name is Isaac Thoman, uh, Gladstone Fire Department. Um, I'm in charge for the holidays this year with the uh, Gladstone Fire Department Membership Association. Um, it's a record year. We're taking on uh, 150 families this year to help out with uh, food and toys for them this holiday season. And um, this year it's a little different. It's a, it's a community event. Um, we're partnershiping with uh, the high school, Glassland High School, um, the Rotary, and the Kiwanis, and making it a group effort to um, sort toys and um, deliver, deliver food and toys to the families in need or the less fortunate families, I should say. And um, last year we did 133 families. Um, there was 210 children. Um, I appreciate your donation last year of the $500 the city of Gladstone gave us. And if there's any way you could uh, donate this year, it would be greatly appreciated. And any extra food we have, we donate to the, the Sunshine Division, who helps us out greatly, um, and the food pantry as well. And I think that's um, all we have. So Isaac, uh, and, you, and I know the firefighters also spend a fair amount of their own personal time doing this during the Christmas time. Any idea on how much time they spend personally uh, off duty and stuff helping out? Um, <coughs> well, between the, uh, the the toy drives and the um, actually left a left a we're doing a thing at the Burgerville tonight, believe it or not, um, from five to eight, and um, got a couple couple guys over there. We're doing a we're delivering food to people and a, and a portion of the proceeds and. Um, Doing like a fill, uh, fill kind of like the fill the boot thing in the drive through there, and that that money goes to this as well. And um, we do a couple of toy drives and and many other many other things. And it's countless hours. Uh, people are willing to volunteer, and uh, the fire department gives up their apparatus for us to use for these. And um, it's greatly appreciated. Um, if I was going to come up with a rough, every every uh, every event has different amount of people, so it's kind of hard to do the hours. I guess I should say, but. Um, I've been at every one of that. It's uh, awesome. I don't, I don't really have an hour for you. I'm sorry. Okay. I've done it myself with you guys, and I know it's a tremendous effort that a lot of the folks put in, putting it together and sure. doing the deliveries and everything. And as a side note, also the library is helping again. Yeah, the well, library is helping. I was just there today, and I filled up the, the, the uh, safety van and brought it over to the high school, and the, the kids came out and brought it in the room we have down there and helped sort it out between the ages of kids for there were some toys as well so for the toys and the food they all section it off it's awesome it's a great community event this year and hopefully it can stay like that for the future Very neat. Sure. the associated force of the 50s has already agreed to give you 150 dollars i've just talked to chief Arnie about that okay 
and uh, I'll bring it down to you guys. Okay, thank it's you. In the form of gift cards at the moment, fifty bucks <coughs> Safeway, that's fifty awesome. bucks three times. So. Okay, thank you very much. Well, I'd like to make a whoops. I just want to ask real quick if yeah. uh, you could tell us where people could donate or. Um, there's a, a um. Le this lady named Leslie Robinette with the school. She has posted. There's 15 donation barrels around Gladstone, different businesses. Um, I guess I can read those off to you right now if you'd like. And um, also at the fire department, of course, you can donate. And um, so we have we have these food barrels. We have the library, Burgerville, U.S. Bank, Crossroads, Lattice Motors, the YMCA, the Gladstone Card Room, Baskin Robbins, um, Somerset Lodge, Vogies, Gladstone Nissan, Mr. Reuter. Somerset Assisted Living, Tebow's, Gladstone High. Was it Gladstone High? We moved it to the Ram. Some one of the one of the parents there said, or she's a worker at the Ram, and said it would be great there. And we have All Star Coffee, which is now called Flo's Joe, I believe. And High Rocks has one. High Rocks Restaurant has one that's their own barrel. So, so any of those business, I know, I'm, I know you're not going to memorize all those, but I'm saying any of those businesses, <laughs> or obviously the Gladstone um, Fire Department, is more than happy to take donations. I'd like to make a motion that we, the Gladstone City Council, uh, donate $500 to the uh, holiday event. I'll second that. Discussion? I was just going to say that. <laughs> um, I will gently say some things that I've talked to Pat about that I think that the city should have a larger discussion in the next year about charitable giving, make sure that we have good guidelines and a good understanding of what our legal obligations are. And uh, Pat, I hope you'll drive that over the next year. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I'd be happy to. I would like to check with uh, the city administrator to see if that funding is possible. That's up to council. You can find it if we approve it. I, I believe so. Okay. Anything else? Okay. All in favor of approving $500 donation, say aye. 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 All opposed? Yeah. Thank, Thanks, thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank Very you. good. Appreciate everything you guys do. Okay. Next there. The next one is Ken Homberston. <coughs> thank you, Mr. Mayor, council persons. I see there are no Grinches at this table. <laughs> uh, my name is Ken Humberston, and I came tonight for two reasons. One is to announce to you that I am running for Clackamas County Commissioner for position number four. Um, I won't go into a great, uh, great deal of detail as to all of the reasons why I'm doing so, but there's an issue that I think is critical to um, to Gladstone and our other cities, and that is, is that I believe that there needs to be a better working relationship between the county commission, our, all of our cities, uh, and the other government agencies in the region. And that is one of the primary reasons I'm running. I bring a record of uh, success at doing that on the Clackamas River Water Board, which you may be familiar with. Um, I was appointed to that board to help straighten out the mess, and uh, we have been successful at doing that. I will leave it at that uh, as far as why I'm running. The other reason I'm here tonight is, uh, as they say in Ghost, put your money where your mouth is. I want to know what the issues are that are important to the citizens of Gladstone and, the, and this council. So I'm here to listen. Thank you. you, do you, if you have any, unless you have questions. You want me to say wastewater? <laughs> <laughs> Funny that you would mention that. I actually have some ideas on that subject. So. Okay. Maybe, maybe we can get together and have that conversation. I'd be happy to. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, sir. Anything else? That's all. That's it? Mm -hmm. Okay, moving down to the consent agenda. We have four items uh, on the consent agenda. Approval of minutes, November 10th meeting, <coughs> approval, approval of monthly project, approval of application for temporary use, uh, liquor license permit at Lattice Motors, and approval of appointments <coughs> to the Library Board, Senior Center Advisory Board, and Traffic Safety Commission. Um, I'd like to remove 4A, please. We're moving 4A. Anything else on the consent? Make a motion to approve consent agenda items 1, 2, 3, 4B, and 4C. Second. <coughs> Discussion? Okay. 
All in favor of approval of those item agendas, the consent agenda, say aye. 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 All opposed? Okay. Items 1, 2, 3, 4, B and C have been approved. Uh, Kim, you want to start us off then with uh, yeah. number 4A? 4A um, is the appointment to the library board, and I have no problem with the appointment to the library board. Um, it's more a process question. Um, I found some possible errors in the staff report. Uh, it, says, uh, it says the library board is unique among city advisory boards and commissions and that it makes recommendations to the city account to the city council about appointments. Um, I believe last January um, we took this on and it could be a typo in the staff report here or maybe the bylaws did not get changed at the library uh, by the library board, which was requested by the council. So if we can just check into that and if it's typo in the, take care of that. If it's uh, at the board level, uh, make sure that that gets uh, taken care of. Good to go. Thank you. It's the only comments I had. Okay, so any other comments on that? Anybody want to follow the piggy tail on that? Okay, so now we're moving back into uh, approval of uh, that portion of the consent agenda, item 4-A, which is the library board. So moved. I'll second that. Any discussion? All in favor of approving 4-A? Aye. 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 All opposed? Okay, 4-A has been approved. Uh, we don't have any correspondence this month. Uh, moving down to the regular agenda. We did. We had correspondence. It's in your packet. It's in your uh, supplemental on the green paper. One of the green. Yeah, right there. Oh, okay, so the, uh, the one from Michelle Kremers, removing her, is that the one I'm looking at? That, that one plus the other. Okay, so Michelle Kremers is uh, pulling her request to be on the planning commission, the application, due to family commitment. Um, the second one, if I may, Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. Um, I've only seen this, uh, I saw it today. I haven't had a chance to respond to it nor read it. I would like that opportunity before you take any kind of action or discuss it. Oh, uh, oh I see. This is all the one about the zoning violations. Zoning yes. violations. Okay. So you've got the information, but I'll be looking at it. Correspondence was received from Bruce Weaver. Yes. And uh, city administrators following up on it. Okay. Yes. Um, okay. Now moving down to the regular agenda item number five: appro approval of payment of November claims. <coughs> um, if I may, uh, we've got a new uh, accounting manager, and she's doing what accounting managers do, and trying to make your information a little clearer and a little more consistent. And she's got a couple of changes. Um, in the package, the letter explains them. If there's any comments or questions or other things you'd like to see, I guess I'm here to take those comments, questions, or things you'd like to see. Well, I, I talked to her since this came out and okay. made some suggestions in regards to um, the uh, line item description. If we can get maybe a better description, okay. You know, and, and she said she'll she understands. Just putting invoice numbers is is tough. You don't know what they are, right? Yeah, yeah. So, exactly. and she understands. And Good. This is going to work on that. I just wanted to let. You. It was a su it was a suggestion. Yeah. It can make it and a little more difficult because I yeah. also says various invoices for several of them. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of hard to make that. Or we'll do what really we can. Really nice. Yeah. And then um, I'll, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Well, I was going to say uh, also on the uh, general ledger. Uh, mm -hmm. Asked if the font might be bigger. Okay. Some of us. Some of that may be software driven. We'll do what we can. Uh -huh. Some of us have we'll buy older a eyes. Glass. Yeah, <laughs> that too. <laughs> Thank you. But the, I would like to say that I appreciate the information. Okay. Yep. I, I think it's uh, a lot easier to read and, and comprehend than uh, what we've see, you know, used in the past. Okay. Good idea. Good. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. No, uh, no action required for this one. Just thank you for we your comments. No, nope. okay. 
Okay, item number six on the agenda is approval to negotiate contract with new city administrator documents to be supplied at meeting. Um, I have no documents. It's taken us a little while to get to where we're at, but uh, I will let you know that Eric Swanson has tentatively accepted our uh, offer letter and that uh, we will be going into contract negotiations with uh, council. And uh, so uh, he would like to start uh, December 22nd if uh, we can get to it. That uh, may require a special meeting, and I'd like to talk about that a little bit after uh, council, anyway. Mm -hmm. So, okay. When after the ink is dry on that, yes. Would you please send an email to all of our panel members? Sure. So, um, when it is finalized, that council and the panel uh, know right away. Okay, I can do and that. Then public notice it or whatever we need to do from there. Okay, item number seven is approval of municipal judge's contract. Assuming this, I'm sorry, Dave, did this, did you Contract. Yes, Mayor. It's uh, it's really kind of the standard personal service contract that we use. Uh, there's been some tweaks that were sort of specific for the Muni judge, but uh, by and large, it's um, a very familiar document to me, and I have no problem uh, recommending approval of it. I didn't see any real difference from the current one that we have with our municipal judge. I, uh, I don't think there is other than... Um, the term, right. extending the term. We added a few different things, actually. Oh, on this overlook. Um, let's see, what were they? We added so that if she misses a court date, uh, we're not paying her specifically. That's the biggest thing. Um, I think that's. That's the thing that probably you would care about the most. I have a question about uh, number six. I think I understand where that comes from. Um, but the, uh, the judge, like the city administrator and the city attorney, report to the city council. Um, how, how does the assistant city administrator fit in there and in that context? I would view it simply as the, um, you know, project manager is is something that it would be the person that uh, Judge Balouf would interface with. So if there is a question, if there's a question about whether it's payment, whether it's scheduling, the assistant city administrator would be the person that she would look to. But certainly you're right, it's a charter position, so that's ultimately um, under your uh, control and, and your supervision. So day, day to day, that's what we're looking at. In, in that. That's okay. right. And uh, are we still planning, Jolene, to have a work session with the judge in January? Um, yes, we have a preference if you wanted to be the first or the second meeting in January. And I can organize it. No preference? Doesn't matter to me. Okay. I would suggest second, second yeah. being the first is going to be with the new administrator coming on board. Is, okay. Is and it's just a work session, not an executive. At right. this point, yeah, correct? Yeah, an overview of, you know, cases of, of the what you see. things that you had previously asked for. E I'm sorry. Yes. I, I did. Yeah, I'm repeating myself. No, no, no. <laughs> I'm just verifying that that's still that's what it. you want to discuss. That's it, yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, question, can, is there, I don't see it in here, is there language that can be put in here, um, on uh, the expiration of contract? Expiration, well, the... Uh, right, when, when the contract expires, it is expired and neither party has e any obligation to the other. Mm -hmm. That is certainly Im implied. I mean, there's a... Can it, can it be more than implied, I guess, is my question. It can to the extent, I, I, I want to make sure that 
that there's an understanding of even if a contract expires, there may have been actions that one party or another took under that contract that the other party disagrees with and feels was ultimately unlawful. Mm -hmm. That party that feels that way, even if the contract has expired, would still have a period of time under Oregon law to make a to make a challenge. So I, I think I understand where you're going with it, uh, and we certainly can add something that just makes that abundantly clear that you know unless this is like you're doing now, extending the term, uh, come uh, December 31st of 2017 excuse me, probably January 1 of 2018, there would be nothing left. But that wouldn't, I don't know if that's what you're getting right. at, Councillor Sickman, but that wouldn't eliminate the ability of either the city or the provider, whoever the provider might be, uh, if they feel that the one part, you know, the other party right. did something wrong, um, to seek a remedy for that. So. Could it be an advantage to have a little more wording in there? If if I felt that that from a, from a purely you know let's be as clear as possible point of view sure um, but I think if if uh, someone like Judge Balouf would be one of the first people to understand you know the concept of basically right. that no one has any obligations anymore once January 1, 2018 comes around so I don't know that it's necessary for this agreement if, certainly if it's something that the council feels strongly enough we can I don't think she'd have any objection to making that abundantly clear. I personally would like to see it, and I would, I would like to see it in move done in all of our personnel contracts myself. I guess I don't understand what the question is that yeah. you have. Um, um, can, can I interject here for a second? Interject here for a second. Yeah. Can we not talk about this particular topic um, at this particular moment? Could we could we put this off till January's council meeting? I when well, being that the current one expires at the end of the month. I think we that's need to fine. Um, to and that's that's fine. Go ahead. I would I would caution you. I, so, I, well, you know, I think I think if the goal is to just have more clear, I think I think what what Councillor Sickman's question is is that to have uh, a lot of clarity around the idea that once this is expired, there, there, the city has no further duty to to Judge Balouf and vice versa. Right? Am, mm -hmm. am I yeah. stating that correctly? Okay. So that's implied, certainly, in, in any way that, that judges and lawyers look at contracts, they would, they would see, okay, well, the, the, the term, now what, what someone may be entitled to or not, that would have to be spelled out here. In this case, you know, there's nothing like that. It's a, uh, not an employment agreement per se, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a you know, a contract. So, um, I'll leave it up to the up to the the wisdom of the council. I'm happy to throw something in. I really don't think that she'd have any problem with that. I don't know that it substantively adds anything. Uh, I'm okay with the way it is. It's a lot. Oh. I didn't see any problem with myself. Yeah. Okay, so you, uh, any need other a motion? Or yeah, I need a motion. Yeah. Uh, well, I move that we uh, approve the personal services contract. <laughs> With Linda uh, Balouf as our uh, uh, municipal judge. I second that. Okay. Uh, the motion was made by Councillor Reisner, seconded by Councillor uh, Mercero. Any discussion? Okay. All in favor of approving the contract, say aye. 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 All opposed? Okay. It's been approved. Okay, uh, down to item number eight on the regular agenda is the budget committee change uh, slash eliminate alternate positions. I think this um, this change just comes with best business practices. Uh, there's nothing in the budget uh, committee rules for budgeting that says there should be an alternate, and and, and I think it actually says that those. It doesn't describe that, so there's no reason to have them, I guess is what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. And those positions still, even if they're alternates, shouldn't be allowed to vote as alternates because they're not appointed members. Mm -hmm. So, Curiosity question. Sure. Have you talked to our city attorney about this? Um, no, I have not. I read the budget manual and the ORS is involved, and so that's where I got my information. Uh, I, I'm sorry, it's kind of a loaded question. We had a... a in-depth discussion about this um, last spring uh -huh. and um, 
it was uh, our city's attorney's opinion, if, and if I misspoke, please sure. step in, that um, as a home, room, whole, home rule city, you know, we have uh, certain rights as a city that we get to do that unless the, the state uh, specifically says we can't. And uh, this question came up after several of us attended a uh, uh, budget, um, shoot, I'm trying to think, a uh, workshop put on by uh, the state revenue. And they were pretty adamant, revenue department, of that alternates weren't uh, allowed. But if you read the ORSs, it doesn't come right out and say that they're not allowed. That's, and that's what uh, our attorney had uh, had given us advice on last year, so we we didn't change it. So that's why I was kind of surprised that it was in the packet. And that is true. I mean, I think that that I I wasn't surprised by the DOR and that opinion. Uh, I think they take a very um, how do I put it strict or narrow interpretation of what is and isn't permitted in terms of budget committees and what the law is surrounding that. But I think Councilor Reisner, you know, accurately uh, summarized the advice uh, and the conversation we had, which was, you know, in the absence of some language that clearly prohibits the use of an alternate, uh, I don't think that, that state law does prohibit that. At the same time, you know, I, I, see, I see the uh, city administrator's point. I mean, you've got a, 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 a process, it's sort of a practice. I think you're very unique in, in using uh, alternates. I think the city of Gladstone is unique in that way. I don't think most cities do. Um, I think it's a stretch to, to read the, the statutes to say you, can, you can't do that, but, I, you know, uh, unless it's something that is really a, a, a high priority for the council to have the ability to have those alternates, I don't, I don't believe you're hurting yourself at all by sort of aligning what you do with what, what <coughs> most other cities do. Sure. Um, I just remember when, when that first came up at the, the workshop, because back when I was on the, uh, and granted this has been 20 years ago, on the school board, we had alternates there also, and I don't know if they, they still do or not. But uh, so, I, and personally, um, it doesn't make really, you know, I guess any difference. I mean, actually, yeah. I'm not saying you're, I'm not saying you're you're wrong. No, it, it's not a matter of, of that. Um, it it doesn't seem to add value, and it takes extra staff time and people to apply and that sort of stuff. That's the only reason we were doing away with it. It's a best business practice, and sure. you know, you guys can be unique if you want to and continue to do that. So uh, we brought it to you and. You get to vote. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. You bet. <laughs> All right. Well, I would. I hear the crickets. <laughs> recommendation to approve agenda item number eight, budget committee change, with the recommended staff action. Second. Okay, the motion was made by Councillor Sickman, seconded by Councillor Mercero. Discussion? For clarity, you used the word recommendation, not motion. Did you make a motion? Yes, I did. Even though you said recommendation? Yes. Okay. <laughs> I stand corrected. <laughs> okay, no further discussion? All right. All in favor of approving the budget committee change, say aye. 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 All opposed? It's been approved. I hit it twice. Okay, item number nine, appointment to budget committee. Uh, applications were received for two positions. <laughs> What's that? The, the new technology, the new big screen. We're putting it to work. Oh, wow. Oh. <laughs> All right, so now two of, the, two of these are reapplying. Right. As I understand it, Lynn Denise is already on it, and so is Doreen Utz. Am I reading it right? Correct. Utz. Utz. That's why I read it. And Col Colette Umbris was an alternate, which we eliminated. So 
What are we supposed to do? Click on something, or what are we supposed to no, do, Joey? No, we're supposed to. Let's go down the row. You tell me. I'll click. <laughs> New technology. And how are we picking? Go with each counselor's picking two. Yes. Okay. So, would you like me to do the roll call? Spreadsheet. Yes, please. All right, Councilor Sickman. I was going to add it up on you. Yeah, I do it. <laughs> uh, Linda Nice, Doreen Ut. Councilor Councilor Mercero. Same vote. Councilor Johnson. Uh, Linda Neese and Doreen Oot. Councilor Turner. Uh, Linda Neese and Doreen Oot. Councilor McMahon. Linda Neese and Doreen Oot. Councilor Reisner. Uh, same for me. Lin uh, Linda and uh, Doreen. Mayor Jacob Ellis. Uh, I'm going to go uh, on Bruce and Ut, Ut. I'm sorry. Okay. Okay, so the two, it's Linda Neese and Doreen Oots. Correct. Yeah. Okay. They, yeah. Okay. Do we need a motion? Do we need a motion to approve them? Please, yes. Yes. I, I move that we approve uh, as we have voted here. I second. Motion was made by Councillor Johnson, seconded by Councillor. Reisner, any dis further discussion? One, one thing I'd like oh. to say is, is that um, my vote was uh, it, it takes a few years to get used to the, uh, the broad budget process and um, that I appreciate everybody that, uh, that applied. And uh, <laughs> thank you. I, I, would, I would like to say that, uh, that the process is such that we've, we've lost Colette Umbris uh, as an alternate. Uh, I don't think she's here this evening, but I would hope that when an opening does occur that she would apply. She's a valuable resource. It's a bureaucratic issue that's, that's dropped her off. So I, I hope that she will apply in the future again. Okay. All, in, all in, uh, in favor of approving the two as voted, say aye. 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 All opposed? So Linda Neese and Doreen Utz are our new Oops. budget Oots. <laughs> Budget Committee. Yeah. Okay, uh, item number 10, appointment to Park and Recreation Board. Four applications received for two positions, I think. Yes. Okay, so there they are. Yeah. Are you ready to vote? And uh, I propose that uh, if one person has perhaps more votes than another, that the person with the most votes gets the perhaps longest term, because there's two different terms, lengths. Correct. There's uh, one that ends in 2018 and one that ends in 2016, mm -hmm. unless you'd like to do it another way. Anybody got any issue no. with that? I have no issue with no. that. Works, works for me. Okay. We'll start down at the left end this time. Uh, Kelsey Proctor and Pete Tracy. Proctor and Tracy. Pat? I'm going to go with uh, Glenda Shearer and Pete Tracy. So, I want to let you know that uh, I appreciate everybody that has applied and am trying to uh, spread the wealth. I think I know that might not sound right, but I like to get as many people involved as, as possible. Uh, in our great city. So I'm, I'm going for Kelsey uh, Proctor and uh, Pete Tracy. Oh, I'm sorry. That's all right. Uh, Kelsey Proctor and uh, Pete Tracy. Tom? Kelsey Proctor and Glenda Schreer. And Kim? Pete Tracy and Kelsey Proctor. And I, and I will go Kelsey Proctor and Pete Tracy. Oh. Now what are you going to do? Now. <laughs> oh, so they got the same amount of votes. Damn, I should have voted. So clear the <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Jolene. Mm -hmm. yeah. I was thinking the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, I guess we go down to the old uh, who put in first, I guess, is real flip a coin or something. Would they like to talk? <coughs> There was a date received, was there not? Was there a date received, uh, Jolene, on this? Yeah. Um, I don't know. Read mine. This is signed as 1116. Uh, Kelsey Proctor's was in sooner at 20 October. 
All right. Anybody got a heartburn with that? I mean, is there any other? Anybody think of another solution? So Kelsey Proctor would be. Oh, you want them to speak? If they want to say something. Individually, there are some. I'm here and I'm happy for either one. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So, I, li I like I'm it. I'm back down, I'm here and I'm good with either one too. Yeah, okay. By, by date applied. Okay, yeah. I, I'm good with by date applied. I mean, there's really, we can flip a coin to do rock, paper, scissors, or whatever you want to do. But yeah. All right, all right. So, Kelly, uh, Kelsey Proctor is going to get the longer term. Pete's going to get the shorter term. Hopefully, he'll stay with us. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> for the next term and the term after that. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I, Looking for 40 more. Okay, so um, we've got our selections and we need to make a motion to approve these selections. So moved. Second. Okay, the uh, motion was made by Councilor Johnson to approve the votes as are, as is, and seconded by Councilor Reisner. Uh, any discussion? Okay, all in favor of the voting as went, say aye. 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 All opposed? Okay, there you have it. Kelsey Proctor and Pete Tracy, thank you very much. And everybody else, they put in for two. So there's our new two parks and recreation people. Okay, number 11, appointment to planning commission. Four applications received for two positions. However, we did have uh, on the correspondence one of those people uh, 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 pulled their application. So we're down to three for two spots. And we have Linda Neese, Natalie Smith, and Barry <coughs> Oots. All right. Linda Neese is seated on there now, correct? Correct. Correct. All right. So we'll start at the middle. Oh, okay. Uh, Linda Neese and Natalie Smith. My turn? Or I'm sorry, Tom. Oh, sorry. Uh, I, I wasn't which way you were going to go from yeah, there. Yeah, really. We're going back and forth. Linda Neese and Natalie Smith. Yep. Linda Neese, Natalie Smith. Uh, Go ahead. Yeah, Linda Neese and Natalie Smith. And again, thank you. Uh, Linda Neese and Natalie Smith. Linda Neese and Natalie Smith. <coughs> Linda Neese and Natalie Smith. Uh, I think it, it, that's good. All right. And and I need a motion both. to approve these. Uh, the voting. So moved. Second. Oh, give it, no, give it to Ms. Turner. Okay, uh, a motion was made by Councilor Johnson, seconded by Councilor Turner. All in favor of, uh, of approving the uh, votes for the appointments of Planning Commission, say aye. 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 All opposed? Okay, thank you, folks. Um, number 12 is, oh, discussion of the business license fees. And I think, Jolene, you can start us off. Sure. Um, this is a discussion because in January we have to redo our annual fee schedule. So I would like to have Council's feedback uh, for a few changes that perhaps would be appropriate to make to the business license fees. Um, the first change would be to uh, change from a resident, non-resident, two separate fee structure to a one fee structure and because of the short time period to adopt the resident fee structure at this point, um, the resident fee, excuse me, at this point for either resident or non-resident. Um, I don't think that it would probably be appropriate at this time to increase everyone's fees to the non-resident amount. And then the second thing that we uh, need to have some direction about is to do away with the extra <coughs> home occupation fee and simply charge the same fee for all other businesses. So home occupation would just be the regular business license fee. And, and can you, uh, what's, the, what's the additional for the home occupation versus? Well, it's an additional $50 and then the uh, resident business license is $100 and the non-resident business license is $125. Um, I was also asked about the how many home occupations there were, and that's in your uh, addendum packet on the count on your desk in front of you to let you know how many home occupations we do have to uh, determine what the cost impact would be. Uh, 
Um, one of the things I had asked, Jolene, I don't know if you guys got to it yet, or maybe this is just a general question about, um, we had, we started the discussion back when the residential business license fee got, uh, we started enforcing that, and then the discussion morphed into can we create a separate uh, fund specifically to deal with those fees so that I mean, call it what you want. The thought was neighborhood improvement fund. So whenever you got the Christmas baskets down Portland Avenue, there could be a little placard that said, this is, you know, part of your neighborhood improvement fund. So people that paid into this, it just didn't go into the general fund. And, you know, we bought another manhole cover with it or whatever. Uh, you know, they wanted to see a bang for the buck, and I think it, it makes sense. So the question is, how hard is that to do? And B, what kind of money are we talking about? To, to build another fund? Well, I mean, not to build another fund, but how much, how much is business licenses across the city? Is it five grand? Is it 50 grand? Is it 500,000? I, I have no idea. I, other cities do that similar kind of thing. They take their business license fees and return it back into the, into the promotion of business. And I mean, that was the whole nexus for collecting and uh, raising rates. Uh, we can certainly do whatever you want to do in terms of segregating it and give you reports. Our accounting systems are sophisticated enough to do that. Um, as far as the dollar value of how much comes in, I, I don't know. Uh, I mean, you can look at it if we've got, uh, didn't I just see uh, 46 non-resident business license, $125, what's that, $4,600 at yeah. that point? And so, uh, I mean, I'm assuming, and Julian, grand. am I wrong? Is it under 10 grand? Yeah, it's, it's around 10 grand probably by the time it's all said and done. What do you guys think of that idea? Or is this a part of a bigger discussion, or can we... I think I'm in favor of it, but I think it's part of a bigger discussion. Um, I think that what I would really like to see, and I mean, I, I applaud that idea, um, but I don't want to get too far off in the weeds with it is what I would really like to do is stay strictly on the fees and approve the fees so the city can move forward. But with that being said, when we talked about when this happened last year, um, I know several of us were politely asked to have a discussion on the streets about this. I know the mayor uh, returned several lovely phone calls about the fee increases. I would like to schedule a meeting for February or March, I think that's far enough out, um, that we could take and have a discussion with the business community and get input from them on, they could get some input from us on why this needs to be, and we could get some input from them on what they think would be good to do. Okay. Um, along with this, we could take, and if we decide on the fees tonight, um, when the uh, applications for business license go out, I would like to see a letter explaining what we've done to the fees this year and give them a date for the meeting in February, March, whatever scheduling works out. Um, so we could get all that out right up front, because that was one of the issues that I had to deal with with the people I talked to, was it was just like, surprise, here it is. Um, so I think the more information we can get out with the application, not a separate mailing, but everybody that it affects would get a, note, a letter, and they would be told about this meeting in the future. Awesome idea. So we had planned on sending the letter out this week, so would it be appropriate if we could pick a day that might work for everyone so we could try to keep the schedule, or is, or is that not possible for you at this point? I'd be all right if you just uh, mentioned in the letter that we plan on having a meeting in February or March and send out another mailing in January. Once watch we get a watch new your newsletter. Uh, we or, or just send another mailing out. I'd be all right with that. Sure. Just so that you can keep moving forward with the, what you need to do. Is March too far in advance for, I mean, if I schedule something, if, if something, if 
staff was to pick a date in March, I could schedule, and this is far enough out, I could schedule around it. Because um, I, would, I would really like to see something going out to them date certain that we're not going to just kick this down the road again. Well, I don't think that's going to happen. Well, and I, I don't want to send. An, I don't want to have to send another mail. Another mailer no, I, to. I mean, well, if it, are you talking about a meeting night? Do a work. You know, like a before. I, I don't. I don't. I'm not opposed to doing night. it in the afternoon or on a week. No. It really is far enough out where we could have a discussion. I mean, and we don't all have to be there. I mean, it's just. Okay. Jim, pick a day. I would say March 8th. Why don't you have a work session before council? I mean, I'm just, or, uh, that's council day for March. Perfect. So are we also talking about the home occupation fee in this meeting, or are we still talking about that this evening? Or I think, I think that, that needs to be decided tonight. tonight so it can go out <laughs> with the... Okay. So, so that, that's something to consider tonight, but the other is for the March meeting. Right. Okay. Um, okay, I have a question on that when yeah. we get there. About okay. home occupation. If, if we get to that point, I think we're there. <laughs> okay, <laughs> need a roadmap. Yeah, I think we need to get a motion. Um, well, I don't think we even need it. We just need to give uh, Jolene some direction as long as we're consistent with what we want to change. So, discuss away, Steve. What do you, what'd you have? In, in the, the, the law of unintended consequences, does anybody know what the purpose is for having a home occupation fee? Generally, what, what, you, what you would attribute that to is people that apply for a business license at home. Um, you spend staff time making sure, one, they're not going to use a whole lot of water, two, they're not going to add more trips on your streets, three, um, you know, I've seen people that manufacture, you know, uh, thousands of rounds of bullets in their garage, and so you want to make sure the neighbors are safe and people aren't storing gunpowder and things like that. So for me, it's the staff review part of that, and um, that's the nexus. I don't you know, how much that's worth, uh, I don't have a number so for that. It, it kind of sounds like a, a one-time effort, you know, the upfront to pay for the staff time up front. Are, we're not doing that, though. We continue to charge it year after year, aren't we? Yes. Um, okay. You, you're asking me a question I can't answer. Okay. Right? Yes. All right. what? The answer is yes. <laughs> yeah. So... Okay, I'm not sure how to word this, but can can we change that to a one-time fee for new licenses and then drop it off? Or I mean, again, I, I don't want to don't want to violate the law of unintended consequences here. We find out that this really had some value, and if we make big changes to it, we're going to get ourselves into trouble. Um, I think I would like to take that discussion up because I think it, the unintended consequences and all that um, we don't know. Right. Um, so to make a policy change like that, um, I think we need to have more discussion on it. And, um, most of the questions that I fielded um, last year had to do with the home occupations because they went from basically, the majority of them went from $35 a year to 155 minimum. Yeah. Um, with no, they, 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 had, they had notice because it was noticed through the city newsletter, but everybody didn't realize it affected them. Um, and so I, we really want to reach out to the people that it does affect and make sure that they understand what we're doing and why and get comment from them. So I think... I think that most of our businesses are going to be happy if the fees are staying the same as they were last year with the exception of a home occupation is going to save $50. I don't think there's any unintended consequences there. So if, if we leave it the way it is right now so that we can have the fee schedule in place for next year, can we change that after the meeting, I mean after we've had discussion, or are we looking at waiting until December of next year? To make any further changes, what do you want to see changed, Steve? I'm not quite. Well, a home occupation fee. Just do it the one time and then not one time, or do away with it, or you know, and, and make sure that we understand 
what the consequences are of that. That home occupation fee really uh, hit a nerve, um, not just that it increased, but that it exists. Now, what Ross is saying makes perfect sense, that, um, you know, there, there are businesses that are incompatible with residential areas, but there are a whole bunch these days that are, um, you know, basically white collar type businesses, you know, IT type things, programmers, et cetera, that have very little impact. Um, and, and so I think we should, we should study that. But maybe the, the March meeting is, is a good place to have all of this discussion. But the reason why she called is because she wanted some direction on what they're doing now. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, that's where, it, where it all stems from because there's some ambiguity as to what we are or are not doing, I guess. Um, it's a great conversation for a budget committee. I mean, I, I'm not trying to kick it down the road, but they're the ones that will have to deal with the impact of the dollars and cents. Do we have two separate fees for resident and non-resident at this time? We do. Is there a reason that we are considering changing that? Because we have been advised by our attorney's office that that is not appropriate to have a non-resident and a resident fee. We need to have one fee. The argument is that uh, no. there's a, uh, it, by no means is there something that comes out and says in state law uh, a city you know, cannot charge a different fee to a non-resident. There are cases that talk about it. It's a, it's a, it's a uh, commerce clause, U.S. Constitution commerce clause, basically penalizing uh, an out-of-state actor potentially. I know that's probably few and far between. Most of your non-resident <coughs> business owners are probably Oregonians that happen to live somewhere in the area and own a business in Gladstone or run a business in Gladstone. But the the concern is that for those that would be uh, potentially out of state businesses that that could run afoul of of the commerce clause of the constitution so is the risk high no uh is is it there yes under the residence <coughs> fee do we divide that up in two classifications? One for normal, no big deal stuff, and one that has traffic problems and whatever? No. In, as far as fees, no. Okay. There are some rules in our code about what home occupation means that I've read about in terms of trips and traffic and that sort of stuff. There are, but it doesn't affect the actual fee that they're charged. Not the fee, but... And Mr. Mayor, we have a, a speaker request card for this topic whenever you are wanting to have that discussion with the public. On, on, the, on the fees themselves or on the later date? Business license fees. Oh. Well, um, are we taking? A public hearing. Yeah. Well, it's not, so we're not inviting, but we can take it from business from the audience on the second go round. Either way, I think it's up to your discretion. All right, we, how many we have? Just the one? Just one for this topic. All right, well, let's, let's do it now rather than make them wait. Yeah. Hey, Mr. Persons. I just wanted to comment <laughs> that the business license fees on the, on the rental properties. Um, stuck me with the $500 fee this past year and again it's going to be $500 in January and that affected a lot of lives here in Gladstone. Um, it's a pretty big fee to stick on a landlord which has to pass on to the resident. A lot of these families are barely making it month to month on what they have for income and when you stick a landlord with a $500 fee um, it hurt a lot of families. There, for me to suck in a $500 fee and I have to pass on a thousand or fifteen hundred dollars in rent increase to cover the five hundred dollars that I had to pay so pretty big fee to, to throw out in Gladstone a small town no no one knows where the money went and I also my landlord in Canby Oregon City and Milwaukee don't have that fee mm -hmm. I've heard that they have it in Portland 
This isn't Portland. I don't want Gladstone to be Portland. I think it's a ridiculous fee. $100 would be what most businesses are paying would seem reasonable. Since I have 15 properties, it costs me $500. A lot of landlords are upset. I know you guys got a lot of feedback at the city hall about it. And I think 100, 125, 150 is reasonable. 500 for a landlord. Some landlords are 1,000. It's pretty ridiculous in my opinion. I just wanted, since you guys are talking about license fees, give you my opinion. All right. Thanks. Thank you. Come back in March. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> All right. So, can I guess um, um, are we at a point where we can say take the home occupation end of it out and leave it as is till we have a further discussion? Maybe the budget committee takes it on and just go with the resident non-resident uh, decision based on the legal advice. Legal advice. What? I would I personally I would like to see the uh, home occupation. Uh, fee be removed because um, I know that was probably one of the biggest sticking points that we had last year. Um, we told a lot of those people we were going to address it. Um, I believe it was actually a misinterpretation. I went back and read minutes and everything else. I believe it was a misinterpretation at the time when they put the fee on top of the business license. Um, and I, I, I'm not, I don't know that um, it's not a good idea to have Steve's conversation at a later date. Is it a one-time fee um, and then it's reduced further because they don't have to do the background checks? Um, Okay, can I just stop you? Yes. But it, it makes sense to me that if we are going to do that, and it sounds like we probably should, then why change it and then find out later, you know, we right. probably should have left it as is and then change it back again for three months worth of wait till March. So I, I'm okay with just leaving it and, and picking it up in March, making sure we discuss it and come up with a decision then. That'll give staff time to do the research and find the minutes and so we're leaving what now? We're going to leave well, my recommendation. What I, I, I think I'd like to see is leave the home occupation out of this decision. Leave it as is. It's in. Send the business license fee with that included, and then take that discussion up in March. Either we take it up or the budget or both of us at a joint and, and make a decision then on whether it should just be eliminated or keep it as is rather than change taking it out now and then maybe possibly have to add it back again in in March when the decision or you know when we go oh we should have should have kept that so well we should have had this conversation several months ago but we didn't we I didn't. know We've been I busy. know <laughs> but but I'm thinking too is we we got as you guys have said you know um, a lot of home uh, occupation businesses that got, you know, dinged um, an extra $50. Uh, My interpretation. Well, that's what, not, not necessarily interpretation, I mean, that's what several of them told us, and that we would address it for the coming year. And now what we're, we're talking about doing is kicking it down the road. In well, March. We're setting a date in March to yeah. do it. So. Okay. And I think we could probably say, hey, uh, sorry, folks, we did mean to get to it, and that's what I've been telling people. But, you know, we did hire a city manager. We hired a public works director. We hired a library. I mean, come on. Yeah. Okay. I, I think well. until March is not going to is not gonna, uh, kill us. Well, March would opinion. be when the discussion is. It wouldn't take effect till January 2017. Right, but if right. they were at the meeting, right. we right. sent the notice out, here's right. the changes, right. they would know it's coming. You okay with that? Anybody any more discussion on this? You okay with that? It's okay for now. Yeah. Tom? I'm I'm just gonna raise a question mm -hmm. to talk about. Uh, what what if we were to say that the home occupation is is up for discussion? Mm -hmm. Okay. And that we will make a decision in March to, in fact, do it or not do it. 
I'm okay. Does that create any problems with you, Joey? Well. Then you got to rebuild them again. E you either going to have to rebuild them, or you're we're going to have to refund, send out checks, and refund money. No, no, no. I, I. I, maybe I misunderstood. In March, just when we send the notice out, when we send the business license notice out and say, here's the changes, here's your, how much you owe us for 2016, just for your info, on March the 8th at 2 p.m., the city council is going to meet, going to have a work session regarding home occupation and setting up a separate fund for business license fees. And at that time, they plan on coming to a decision on whether or not they're going to eliminate the home occupation fee, which will then take effect January, January of 2017. 17. Right. Okay. I agree with that. Okay. The only question is, do we <coughs> want to limit it to home occupations and funding, or should it be business license in general um, for that discussion? I, I, I'm not, I don't have a problem with them saying we're going to talk about the business license come March the 8th, but okay. specifically we will be addressing right. these two items and other issues. Good. I'm good. So, okay, so let's back up. <laughs> so I think we've got, we've taken the home occupation out of this decision-making process until March, and that will be notified. And then as far as the resident, non-resident, can we give Jolene direction to make that change based on the lawyer's opinion, the city attorney's opinion. I think we should follow the attorney's uh, yes. Uh, advice. Yes. Okay, so we're good. So, Jolene, so far we're good. Okay, so I understand about that. Is it going to be March the 8th? Is that at some, did I hear March the 8th? Are we just going to notify March or could I get a little bit? Just could you remind me? What did you decide? I think you said the 8th. Eighth is your council meeting, uh, first council Fire meeting. Two, let's do a work session. A work session prior an to hour the before, eight. an hour prior. Four and a half. And so at five o'clock? Uh, five o'clock on the eighth? Five o'clock on the eighth. We good? Mm -hmm. Yep. All right. Thank you very much. Okay. All right, moving down to uh, review budget calendar for comments. Mm -hmm. uh, once again, on this budget calendar that's included in your packet, you see the word draft. It didn't, it didn't uh, print very well. Um, one of the things that I would probably add to this is your goal setting session, which is already scheduled for January. So I'd probably add that to the top of it. Uh, any other thoughts that you have on this calendar? Uh, it's just a way to drive us uh, to a date. Go ahead. Two, two things. One that we've done the last couple of years is the budget committee has had a, a mid-year uh, look at the budget. So I mean, it wouldn't necessarily be uh, a 216, 217, but I'm not sure if we have on the calendar for this current year getting together in January. Um, actually, this year it was February, but uh, that was something that uh, we've talked about and I think looked forward to. And then also uh, in... Uh, started a couple of years ago uh, the uh, council has um, to get has had uh, different boards and commissions looking at their particular slice of the the uh, the budget as uh, or proposed budget for example the parks board uh, looking at uh, the parks part of the uh -huh. the, <coughs> the budget is what I know they uh, Look at that this year, and uh, and actually last, and that wasn't noted in here. Um, when I was talking with Miss Gray, uh, the thought was probably maybe March, that might might occur at 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 those at that level before after you know the department heads, and uh, you know she creates the preliminary budget, and before it goes to uh, the budget committee at the end of, uh, of March. Hmm. Um, one thing you might keep in consideration too is uh, spring break is around the 21st to the 25th of March. That was just a couple observations. Okay. Thank you. Anybody else have any thoughts on that 
it's it's a draft and the dates will change and everything else but it's a way to start shooting at it and i want to thank you for putting this uh, uh, ahead i know it's something the mayor had talked about uh, earlier this year uh, uh getting started uh, earlier than we have in the past sure and uh, a uh, a calendar uh, generally a materialized in the spring so thank you for uh, getting yeah. us uh, thinking about it and starting in the you know that process setting it up for the next city uh, administrator he sure. he has to execute i just have to put i'm it sure together. he will yeah i'm certain he will thank you uh, any other any other things for us on that nothing okay moving down to uh, uh the added agenda item 13.5 which is a uh, <coughs> forward from our executive session earlier you seem to have the best copy of that resolution that we you need. want me to pass it around well or just read it I mean you, <laughs> you want me to read it or try to I can't read my own stuff I know oh wait a minute I can we must have had the same teacher so uh, make a motion that we authorize uh, the city administrator to work with our outside legal counsel to explore opportunities to address rate equity within the tri city service district. Second. Our uh, motion was made by Councillor Reisner, seconded by Councillor Johnson. Any discussion on this? Nothing. Okay. All in favor of approving, say aye. 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 All opposed, say no. I may have it. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> All right. Um, business carried fo business carried forward uh, update. Urban yes. Um, the uh, urban renewal map you'll be happy to know is in drawing right now. Uh, we've got uh, records from the county for a GIS based map, and we're overlaying the urban renewal district over the top of it so as the urban renewal group gets together and expands or contracts or does whatever those changes will be easy to make and you guys will always have a published map so so that's underway um, hopefully it'll be done January first is first meeting in January I would thank think you. thank yeah. you you bet um, I've put on here no second meeting in December uh, there's no regularly scheduled second meeting but with the um, sorry with the uh, new city administrator contract uh, hopefully being done in the next week or so I would think uh, the new city administrator would like to start on the 22nd of December so it'd be nice to get together in a special That'd meeting be two, and be in two weeks get that approved so uh, it's your choice yeah. council give me direction at this point when do you want to have another meeting before before the 22nd or after well I think before the 22nd so we can get them on oh, board okay as a contract yeah. oh geez no wonder why I'm looking at yeah, you're looking at next, next year thing, yeah. <laughs> yeah so we got uh, Planning Commission meeting next next Tuesday here so I'm assuming they're meeting it, we are okay but it only take five minutes so we right. can do it at 530 again or whatever how about the uh, 16th or 17th either one of those days work for you guys uh, I'm not available the 17th. You're not available. 16th? Well, yeah. How long do you think it will take to... Well, I, hopefully, hopefully you'll have all had a copy of it by that time, and so if there's conversations, we'll work our attorneys to death and get them fixed. So let's I mean, I'm, I'm the sooner the better, as far okay. as I'm concerned. Um, or we could state how you fix for the 16th. 16th works. Or we could Tom? Do. Good. With That's 16th? Fine. Okay. Mm -hmm. 16th, we have it? Use your time. I can't, but uh, okay. if you got well, seven of you, that's good. I can't do anything 16th through the 19th. So well, I was mean, thinking, what, well, if it's only a few minutes, how about earlier on the 15th? I can, 15th the I can do the 16th if we do it early. Like what time early? Oh, you're doing, the, you're, you've got your... 4.30. Uh, 4.30? And I don't have to be here. There's enough here that. All right. How about the 15th at five o'clock? That'd be. You can't no, 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 no. Just do the 16th. Do the 16th. 16th. With the 60th. 16th at. Five o'clock. Five o'clock. Okay. okay. Five o'clock. Okay. You still gonna be here? 
Maybe. Yes, sir. I want to do it at 7.30 or 8. <laughs> <laughs> and I may not be. Last town tell you. <laughs> okay. Okay, what? 5 p.m.? Yes. On the 16th. 16th. Thank you. Five. Thank you. Okay. All right. Um, all right, second opportunity business from the audience. Uh, we have one person that's filled out a card, Mr. Pete Tracy. Thanks, Mayor. Thanks for that nice appointment to the Parks Board. I'll try to make this short and sweet. Uh, I talked to Ross earlier. We uh, a couple of the members from that frequent the park down there at Meldrum Bar. I'm bringing back the Meldrum Bar issue. Sorry about you know beating a dead issue. I met with uh, Port of Portland, and I discussed a couple of changes. I had an opportunity to speak to a few of the council members and Mayor. Um, Kelly Madalinsky has said he's going to take it to his powers of bees to just see if those changes, uh, some of it is as simple as verbiage to protect us from what Mother Nature is doing right now, which me and Kelly may meet Friday to look at what this flood's doing to the uh, bulkhead. I had an opportunity to walk down with a couple of city council members down there and look at it, so be real fresh to see after a big flood what it does. And then possibly looking at flip-flopping the parking lot construction to leave the fishing point and then take the acreage that there are the footage that they need for their mitigation. Um, I spoke with Kelly this afternoon, and I just want to let you all know that uh, they haven't said no, but as Ross said, one guy working with the city of uh, the Port of Portland, it's very difficult. I'm speaking for a couple other fishermen that are in the crowd. We didn't want to come up here and take a bunch of your volunteer time, but know that they're back there and they're listening. Um, a couple of the big complaints are there's there's one of our members of the community here, longstanding park user. He never even saw the signs, city newsletters. And I know we put them all out there, but they were all you know not focused enough to drag him in. Um, just want to let you know we are still bringing it up with them um, to see if we can save a little portion of the park, but uh, certainly in no danger of hindering the project. I think that uh, you know that money they're bringing to us and infusing in the city is awesome. So. Thank you, and uh, hopefully, if I can, if I hear anything positive, maybe I can get it on an agenda thing for the city council too in the future. And if any of you have any questions, because I've been able to talk to a few of you, please let me know or reach out and contact me. All right. All right. Mm -hmm. Thanks for Thanks, the appointment. I was down at the bulkhead for hey Pete. I was down at the bulkhead for a little while today, and it is the uh, the upriver bulkhead. Is has a two foot stream of water between the bank and the bulkhead now just eating away at that side. So, and I realize it only happens a couple times a year, but it, yeah. it seems like in the last huge. five years it hasn't happened. And yeah, you know, a week uh, after we're down there, it's doing it. So, yeah. Council McMahon was one of them that got down there and actually walked into the depths of the bulkhead with us. So, I uh, look forward to seeing what more to come. That's simply verbiage down there. That blacktop issue is another whole issue. And, Thanks, Ross. I've got to work with him in the last 30 days, and he's seemed to always guide me in the right direction. So we're going to miss you too. So thank you. I hope it gets better. Thanks. Hi, thanks, sir. Thank you, Pete. Thanks. Okay. Uh, second business from the council. Did we? Co oh, okay. Yeah, I guess we should. We only talked about Ross the first time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, well, I'm not going to talk about him again. Yeah, that oh, okay. story's getting old now. All right. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, so Kim, go ahead and start us off if you want. Um, I just want to take and bring up once again, and we got a million things on our plate. We've done a lot of really good work this past year, um, and I really celebrate that. But, but um, I brought it up last month. I'd like to get it on a future agenda of some sort. How we handle correspondence, public testimony. As I was reading the uh, minutes. Um, you know, we had those young ladies from Cracksburger. They've got a program. Um, they come in, they spoke to us, and there it sets. Um, is an individual counselor going to take on, you know, sending them a letter, uh, have a letter go from the city supporting their endeavor, uh, writing a check for their endeavor? Um, we have emails come in and they get addressed to the entire council. Well, 
Are we all going to respond individually? Is nobody going to respond, or do we designate somebody? I just think it's a discussion we need to have when people communicate with us. Um, I think we have an obligation to respond. Um, and so I just, I'd just like to have that discussion so we can kind of decide what we would like to do and the best way to do that. So if we can just keep that in the back of our minds when we get a few extra minutes, um, do that. And that's all I have. I've got nothing to add. As we uh, head into the holidays, I'd like us to uh, remember our servicemen and women who are serving overseas, away from home on the holidays, including uh, my neighbors, uh, Arnie and Wendy Way's son, uh, Lieutenant Tyler Way, who is serving aboard the Harry S. Truman as a uh, dentist currently en route to the uh, Persian Gulf. Uh, let's remember those folks during the holidays. I'd also like to uh, uh, wish everyone a very Merry Christmas and a happy and prosperous New Year. Neil? Oh, cool. Thank you. Yeah. Um, following up with what Kim was saying, um, I'd like to maybe add into that discussion when we have uh, citizens come before us with um, suggestions or maybe uh, concerns, like, for example, last um, month, Bill uh, Rigdon um, had a question about uh, sewer bill when they're uh, down uh, down south for the winter, uh, and so and so I'd like us to uh, work out or you know discuss as to how we get uh, if the staff has talked to them, you know some somehow we get some communication back and forth. Um, and so speaking of communication. Uh, New members of the uh, Parks Board, we've got a meeting coming up on the 4th of uh, January. So uh, look forward to seeing you. And anybody else that wants to come, you're all welcome. We'll make room one way or the other. So welcome aboard. Thank you. Appreciate stepping up. And that's it. And have a Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. Two things, uh, just that uh, at the Senior Center last month, we did have the Thanksgiving uh, uh, lunch, and we had over, I think, 100 folks there that the mayor and myself and uh, some other volunteers helped at. Len Nelson was there, and the, also they're having the Christmas lunch on, I want to say, 17th, either 16th or 17th. I have to look at the calendar again, and they always could use some extra volunteers to help serve. So if anybody would like to join us, please do so. And then also, of course, the... Uh, Ninth Annual Santa and the Mac is running again this year, December 16th through the 19th. So myself and my fire engine and Santa Claus will be out in the neighborhoods collecting toys and canned goods for the holiday food drive. And most of mine, actually, all the toys that I collect usually goes up to the Seventh-day Adventist camp. They have a food bank there for the city of Gladstone, so the canned goods that I collect generally go up there to those folks. I'd just like to thank everyone for showing up this evening. The uh, weather is not that great out there. I'm surprised to see so many faces. And please continue to come back. It's nice to see so many people here. Thank you. Merry Christmas. I, I don't have anything. I was just going to say the same thing Sue says. I, I say it all the time. Thanks for coming. I mean, the more people we get in here, the, the, better, the better it is. It's, it's awesome. So keep coming. Uh, ask those questions. Send those emails. We'll figure out how to answer them. Um, but yeah, everybody have a good holiday and I appreciate you coming out. So thank you. Have a good night. Uh, we are going to adjourn this meeting. Uh, don't have to leave yet. Yeah, because we have to go. Oh, they can. No. Yeah, you get the urban, urban, urban renewal. Oh, they can go. Okay, we're going to adjourn this regular agenda. We're moving to a. Uh, well, first let me adjourn. The meeting is adjourned. Now we're moving to an urban renewal board meeting. <laughs>